yes all africans are soldiers just to tell you a little bit about soldiers soldiers go through challenges that ordinary people cannot <laughs> that they cannot partake i i tell you they go through different challenges all all that is training to make you tough strong and you know stable should i say are those the right words to use and that's what soldiers go to go through <laughs> Listen to what I have to say. This is why I say all Africans are soldiers. First and foremost, every soldier will agree <laughs> that they are called to secrecy. I don't know, they, do they even take oaths and all that? I have not seen secretive people like soldiers. Oh yeah, me, I'm one person. As long as, for example, if I'm traveling somewhere and in a bus there happens to be a soldier, I'll start talking, speaking my mind, telling them what I think. I'm like, you guys, what, what? I open up. But those guys are so hard to look at. You, ca hey, you cannot get, you cannot get information out of a soldier if they do not want. Hey. So that is what happens in an African home. Hey, let me tell you something. In an African home, they tell you, never say things of the house to anyone who's not a member of a family. Do not talk things of your home outside the home. Should you do that? <laughs> that is a rule, number one. I know most of you Africans can agree. If you didn't eat, you don't tell neighbors you didn't eat. Huh? For instance, don't have, you don't. First of all, they'll tell, some people will take advantage of your situation. Also, I don't know. Okay, this is an... I, it, it has good sides of it, but I also think it comes with the... Uh, some little negatives because sometimes you may miss out on people who would be of much help to you okay but they tell you never say family things secrets or not you're not allowed to say them out never do not talk your family out outside the home all family things are spoken inside sometimes you not even be allowed to discuss those things in the compound inside the house and with only the presence of family members should there be a visitor you, you're not allowed to, to say anything. You don't complain. You don't... Eh, nothing. Now, I tell you the consequence of being talkative. <laughs> Just talking family things anyhow. But Jaku Kunyane can you and you'll never do it again. What I just said is the, 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 there is a certain... Um, there is a certain weed that if it touches your skin, it's very itchy. So people who don't keep secrets in African setting are punished like that. They pass that leaf on your mouth. It will itch you the whole day and you will never say anything again. That is even how they immunize you for being a rumor monger. Eh, that is highly discouraged. Because from rumor mongering, you may be tempted to speak what? Things concerning the home. <laughs> now, aren't you being trained to be a soldier? <laughs> Tap. Keep secrets. You take an oath to secrets in an African home. You don't say things for her. No. If you testify to this, give me your experience in the description box below. And like you, this is not torture. I tell you, this is tough training. African homes are, hey, they, they breed soldiers. This is tough training. African parents have tough love. Tough love. They say, ah, if they, they are even saying that he who doesn't tempt his mouth will not have where to sit. Hmm? He who doesn't tempt his mouth will have nowhere to sit. No people to talk to. Yeah. The next thing in the army. In the army, you respect your superiors. Hey! I know, I don't know those ranks of the army very well in order, general, lieutenant, what? I don't know those things very well. But in an African setting, eh? You, is, you respect your superiors, your elder. Hmm? For example, should your elder brother tell you to do anything and you reply, I will not do it. Or this, you, any way, should a parent have any sense of disrespectfulness to your elder? Hey, they will ask you, are you, are you the one who, who planned that it? Uh-uh, did you come before him? No. Do you know as much as he knows? No. Okay, educate him. You fail to educate them, you are killed. Seriously. Let me tell you, disrespect is not tolerated at all. That's why in most African homes, you find elder brothers and parents, they command respect. I tell you, not brothers, even sisters. Ah! 
cross we used to be pain seriously you find like my elder sister is older than me by a year or two but then the respect she commands my dear should she say anything and you reply anyhow hey actually parents even give them authority if they disrespect you discipline them those are our elder brothers and sisters before you even report to the parents you discipline them before you know your chap chap you've received three slaps and you can't do anything should you fight them back the mother will be like oh so you're fighting with me because i'm the one who gave them authority so you're fighting with me okay you come <laughs> come and fight <laughs> oh my god going out in african homes it is interesting now <laughs> but will i be that kind of mother i don't know you do not respect your elders and so it is in the army by the way so it is in the army you're highly punished for disrespecting your superiors okay if and if you want to guide them in any way you have to be very humble and very respectful because there are sometimes my elder sisters will tell you to do something you know and then you'll be like, ah, but me, I've been watching the chances. Can't you do that yourself? So, so you're undermining me. Eh? Me and you is older. Then you'll be like, sh sh should I tell mom? Like, like, no, I was just joking. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I tell you, all Africans are soldiers. And so that way you grow up with respect for each other. Even the elders, they are not rebuked in front of you, the juniors but they are taught to be respectful to the juniors okay so and that is key in the army you don't have respect you can't serve in the army so all of us africans are soldiers <laughs> some of these elders of ours our elder sisters and brothers used to take advantage of us they need to do all things when they are just stayed at home playing Maybe they are playing whatever they are playing, and then they, they, they keep sending you, you go and wash clothes, you go and take the goods, you go chicken, you peel the food, they cook. The, at the end of the day, you've been loitering all around and they have not done anything. Some days they used to. I know you're watching this. Next year, you do. <laughs> uh, I'm told, so just nothing is impossible. Impossible is not in the vocabulary of soldiers, you guys. It's not it's not in the vocabulary of soldiers. What is hard doesn't mean it is impossible. And that is so, so it is in an African home. African parents do not have the word impossible in their mouth. They don't. First of all, they'll ask you if you're doing something, they'll tell you maybe you're trying to break firewood and it can't because maybe sometimes you're young, you're not strong enough, but they, they expect you to keep doing it until it breaks off, okay? So you, you don't come and say it has failed. How does it fail? They will first of all ask you, how can something that doesn't talk fail you who talks? How? <laughs> you come and say, I was talking the goat to, to, to tie the goat to graze and then it refused. It refused. What did it say to you? In how, what were the words the goats used to refuse? As in, impossible is not in their vocabulary. That, I know me, I can't do this thing. Why can't you do it? And more so, if there is anyone who has done it, you guys, you cannot say I can't do it. The problem was only, me, the problem was always breaking firewood and also pounding genus until they are fine. I used to say, me, me, I can only stop there. How can come, how can others bring out pine and then for you only stop there uh, for you a rare species so impossible is not in there it is not in any way like in africa the setting you always find a way always find a way for example i remember that time uh, our bicycle we had an old bicycle that used to break down every time we we're coming from the garden maybe because of the overloading because every time we came from the garden you are carrying food not only for your home but you don't go to the garden and only bring food for yourself. At least you have to carry food for someone else too. Whether they have asked you or not, okay? You have to carry something. So most cases, our bicycle could be overloaded. Maybe something happens and then, you know, eh, African parents, you don't tell them, ah, for us, we are not mechanics. Ah, uh -uh. find something to do. Please do something. 
you've been riding that bicycle for a month. You still don't know how everything works on that bicycle. If you don't know, she will repair it and you will not just ride in that bicycle anyhow. Yet for us, it used to be a home riding road master. <laughs> Those big bicycles. Man got home. So you always had to find a way. So most cases you find our brothers tell you, lift here. You push when you lift. Hey, you guys, I can't describe. Can you imagine pushing a bicycle as you're lifting somehow for the weight not to affect the, the tire? And <laughs> the, remember, if the tire of a bicycle bursts and you don't inflate it there and then, it will affect the lupanka. What is lupanka called? Is it the wheel? So, you do it, it spoils. There is no money to make that. So, you find, find a way of taking this food home and that the lupanka is not what? It's not spoiled. Okay? So, once you reach home or you reach somewhere, you can find a mechanic, then they, they work on it. But you don't just say, ah, for us, we can't do all of you will team up, lift that carrier, <laughs> mjimanje. You lift the carrier and then keep pushing forward so that the weight doesn't really go on this affected part of the body. So you, you impossible you're not in their vocabulary. You have to find a way. If plan A fails, find plan B. If it fails, find plan B. Now, high above, soldiers, these soldiers go through a lot. Another thing, soldiers go through a lot to protect their own, to protect the nations, to protect their own people. An African child is expected, uh, the same is expected from an African child. Ah, should two kids be fighting and you are there and you didn't do anything, that alone is punishable. Punishable. So when I say punishable, there are a lot of punishments in an African home. Maybe I should make, I should make another video telling you about the punishments in an African home. So two people fighting and you don't do anything about it is highly punishable. First of all, as they're fighting, they'll, they'll ask them, in case anyone reports, oh, this one has beaten me. Who was there? They say, every now, they call you. How come these two reached a point of fighting and you had not yet intervened? That is punishable. Another thing. How can someone else beat your own sister or little one or someone of your house? Where were you to defend them, to protect them, and to make sure that didn't happen? That is punishable. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you. That's why in Africa we have each other's backs. Like we've been there for each other from from day one <laughs> hey that's why we have strong family ties and strong family values that's what makes us who we are the upbringing okay and it's not in any way torture by the way mm -mm. unlike somewhere where i think some parents if a parent punishes a kid they are taken to police and know that in africa taking a parent to police you'll find another one you'll find another parent <laughs> So you are called to protect your siblings, um, your neighbors, people you know and people you don't know. Because it is believed in Africa, like this world is a very small place. Today there may be two sharing that person and you didn't help them out and that very vice may reach your house. So it is better to prevent a bad happening outside the home before it reaches your compound. Hmm? You see a neighbor's kid fighting, you intervene. Because before you know that kid will come and fight with your own siblings in your home. So you have to intervene and teach them never to fight again. And let me tell you something. Fighting in an African home is highly punishable. The fighter and the fighty. The one who was beaten and the one who was beaten are both beaten. Why did you fight? Sometimes you've not even... There are some people you can't fight. They just beat you. Because fighting means you give me, I give you. But there are some people who just beat you. But still there, in our home, two of you are punished. The one who was beaten and the one who beat. In that, in at the next time, you will highly stay away from war. <laughs> you highly stay away from war. You don't bring war. Soldiers are very open-minded. The same is required of African kids. You have to be open-minded. Like, 
what you know is not the end of the world. Your experiences are not the end of the world. Okay? So, if at all, you, you, you do not know it all. Like, like, there is always a lot more to learn. That is what they put in you. That is not enough. Okay? They will tell you, he who thinks that knows it all is what? Is a fool. And also, he who thinks that the past experience will be the same as this experience is also a fool. That means you always have to be open-minded. You don't know what you're going to... What You should ex expect something new, like new challenges, new... like You know? Be open to opportunities, open to new challenges and all that. You don't say, okay, I went through that last time and, you know, last time is last time. This time is this time. Tomorrow will be tomorrow. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you. So, so that encourages a lot the love of learning. They tell you, okay, you got to Learning never stops. And the soldiers are the same. You do not give up on learning. You don't stop learning once you are a soldier. You learn until you're dead. And that should be a law of life. You don't stop learning, whether you're a soldier or not. But for us Africans, we are, we are privileged. We are all soldiers. <laughs> so you don't stop learning until that day you give up your breath. So, like I told you, soldiers are mainly called for service. This is selfless service. You high, you regard others with high in high regards. You, you treat others in high regards than yourself. That is selfless service. The soldier should be very helpful, okay. And so the same is required from an in an African home. Very helpful. You have to give a hand, not only to your family members, to the people you know and the people you don't know, to your neighbors and those far away. Eh. Hmm. That's why we grew up. If you're going to fetch water for yourself and you have neighbors who are aged people, old in age, maybe because sometimes, you know, when this schooling started, some old people don't stay with their children, sometimes the children are at school or something. But in the holidays, hmm, all the children are grown up and they're all married off, they're married, something like that. In holidays, when you go to fetch water, you fetch for those grandmas and papas too. Actually, sometimes before you fetch water for your own house, your own family, you have to fetch for them. Make sure all their jerry cans are full. Make sure their utensils are clean. Make sure their clothes are clean. Before you do chores in your house. <laughs> then they tell you, should mommy go and check and there's no water in the old woman's house? They'll ask you, mm -hmm. So did you expect her to go to the borehole and pump it? So some, <laughs> that is highly punishable. You why don't you care for others? They first of all ask you, when would you want the same to happen to you? No. And they they'll ask you, if you're sick, because most cases when you are sick, you don't reach your eyes at home. When you are sick, also when you get sick, should we take you to the well to fetch water? Then that's the condition the grandma is in. You have to okay for those for those cases. The punishment would be for you know what to do, but you have not done it. But it was not forced, okay? They, they, they bring it to you in a way that it is part of you. Like it is your responsibility to do it. But then most cases, you're punished because you know what to do and you didn't do it. Okay? You, you know, this is what we do on a daily, but you didn't do it. So that was the source of punishment. So, um, selfless service is highly encouraged in an African home. You do not mind yourself. If you, if you are an elder sibling, more so, you don't eat before you've served all your little siblings. You don't. This is not something they tell you that you don't eat before all your siblings are, are cared for. They tell you, you first care. There is a way they, African parents are brilliant. They do not put those things direct to your face because you may end up hating your little siblings, okay? They, there is a way you are groomed in that you you consider them before you think of yourself. I used to see this of our brother till now. Our brothers, our elder brothers and sisters. They serve, give us food 
I remember there was a time you guys have a lot of stories. There is a time we didn't get satisfied. We were only the ones at home with him. Then he's like, Are you guys satisfied? And then we're like, No. Like then he had to boil another water and mingled for us another ugali and we ate it all. <laughs> As in you see if because another person would be like me I'm satisfied, I won't care, you get. But then they are treated to 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 to, to care more about others more than themselves. That is a trait of soldiers. You guys, we can't mention all traits of soldiers. <laughs> At least I've given you a hint of some of those traits that make all African soldiers. Uh, you know, soldiers are called to be loyal, decisiveness, social intelligence, um, curiosity, survivors. Like, you are taught to be curious. I'm telling you now. Like, I can't explain all these things in detail because... <laughs> They, they are way broad, but that's it all. Most of you are going to tell me, oh, okay, or even as we grew up in an African setting, but the experiences were different. They are not quite what you're talking about. They're not something like that. But if it's not something like that, uh, biggest percentage, over 90% of African homes are like that. If you grew up in, in then you are an exceptional one. You are an exceptional African. But most cases when you say, Africans are like this. You mean the biggest percentage of African homes are like that. If you negate this, please free, feel free to put your feedback in the comment section below <laughs> and share with me your African experiences. I, I'm sure I'm going to be reacting to most of your comments. And yeah, if you want to know the most punishments that are given in African homes, I'll be also letting you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll also be letting you know about those. It's been your girl, Irina Tiel. I appreciate you so much for the support, for the love, and for being here. I do not take that for granted. Please feel free, if you're Asian, if you're American, share your experience in your homes. How is it? And do you agree to most of these things I've said or you negate? If you negate, please give us your opinion. You know, if you're free to negate, like or dislike this video, all in the engagement. And uh, see you in the next video.